Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another video in my Nobel Women series in which we read a book by a female Nobel Prize for Literature winner each month. And this is the ninth book we read, uh, Hertha Müller's uh, Herztier in German, um, the English translation, a land, The Land of Green Plums. The book was first published in 1994 and Hertha Müller won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2009. Müller is um, a Romanian writer but writing in German. Uh, she is born in um, the part of Romania that is has the German language as mother tongue. Um, she is quite... Um, sometimes considered a difficult writer, you know, um, to uh, to connect with or to, to read. Um, she mainly writes uh, books that are about the Ceausescu uh, dictatorship in Romania and what life is in a setting like that. And Herztier, or The Land of Green Plums, is no different. The book is set in the 1980s in Romania and is told from a, 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 a female narrator voice um, and this narrator tells us the story of four different people. We first encounter Lola, um, a young girl who keeps a diary and uh, because she can't cope with the life in, in Romania she commits suicide. She is then um, excluded after death from the Communist Party because she is considered a traitor. And the narrator finds the diary, the writings of Lola, hidden in a cupboard, and she shares them uh, with three fellow Romanian men, Karl Kurt and Georg. And then the story develops from there. We follow the lives of these three men and the narrator um, and we get a feeling about um, the constrictions, the, the, the paranoia, the, the life in, 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 a, in a country like that because all four of them, so the men in, and the, the narrator, uh, experience um, uh, persecution. Um, they then later in the novel, people will leave Romania, go to Germany, but that that's not really the, the issue. So it's not a spoiler if I if you haven't read the book, if I tell you because it's even in Germany uh, the 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 terror of that regime continues. So the book is really about the life of people, ordinary people, uh, in. Uh, Romania during that time and it focuses on people who try to um, yeah they all try to find a way to cope or not cope and then immigrate but it's uh, it's about people of course who are not uh, able to live happily in that regime. Um, I really really think this is a brilliant book. Um, uh, the The language is quite uh, choppy, I think one of the, the Goodreads commentators said, said rightfully. Um, it's not a straightforward uh, storytelling. Sorry, I'm wobbling the camera. It's not a straightforward storytelling. And that, I think for some readers, that makes it difficult to get into the book. Um, but for me, the structure and the language really worked and it made sense. Because um, for me, it enhanced this feeling of um, uh, fragmented lives uh, where you can't live the life you want. And so your life is, feels sort of chopped. So that the, the, I thought the language was not just, you know, done because Hedda Müller can and she's brilliant with language, but it, it, it served a purpose, at least for me, um, so that you... Um, that it connected for me with the story and with the theme and the story that Hertha Müller wanted to tell us. Um, I I don't I have reread the book in German. I have to admit, so I cannot uh, judge the English translation. I had a quick look, uh, but 
um, I didn't have the time, I'm sorry, to really read the English translation side by side with the German. So, of course, a lot of you will have read it not in, in the German original, but probably in the English translation. And I'm really curious to hear uh, whether the um, the elements that I mentioned in, in the language, whether that came across in the English translation um, and what you thought of the trans uh, translation. Uh, but yeah, like I said, for me, uh, it's one of my favorites by Hertha Müller. That's why I picked it. Also because it's not extremely long, so you you can read it in a in a fair amount. Because some of her books are are really long. Uh, but I I immensely enjoyed the reread, and again, I thought it was a brilliant book. But of course, I'm interested if you read along. Uh, first of all, thank you for reading along. But I, I'm also very interested in hearing your opinion on the book. Um, we only have on to the next month. We only have two more to go. Um, unless there is in October when the Nobel Prize for Literature will be announced. If there is a female winner, uh, we will read a book by the winning author in October. Um, but for now, we have two more to go, and in August, we will read a short story collection, and that is Alice Munro. Um, Alice Munro, I'm sorry. I'm not awake, obviously. <laughs> Alice Munro, <laughs> Too Much Happiness. Um, uh, Munro, of course, is a, was a Canadian author, and she uh, received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2013, so four years after Hertha Müller. I hope um, you will read uh, Too Much Happiness with me. I'm really looking forward to rereading this collection. Um, thank you for watching for now, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like I said, talk to me down in the comments, and I will see you in the next one in this series, um, end of August, when we discuss Too Much Happiness.